Hey everyone, this is Nick, and since we don't get Microsoft Office on Linux, I think it's time we look at our options. And I know there's Microsoft Office Online, but if you really need Microsoft Office specifically, then Microsoft Office Online isn't going to be enough and you'll be better served by one of these alternatives. I won't talk about online Office Suites either, only things that you can install directly on your desktop and that actually integrate with your Linux desktop. Just like I smoothly integrated this segue to today's sponsor, which might come in handy if you still have CentOS 8 servers and you want to extend their lifecycle. This video is sponsored by TuxCare and the day has finally come. CentOS 8 is now officially end of life. So it's not getting any patches for any new vulnerabilities in any of its packages, unless you subscribe to TuxCare's extended lifecycle support service and get all these patches straight from TuxCare instead of getting them from the distro. This means that your systems will stay safe and compliant with all your security requirements while you plan for a migration to another system. Running without support gets expensive very quickly. Check out the calculator available in the TuxCare website to get an idea of just how expensive it can be. As the Log4j issues have shown, being at risk and being attacked is not something that happens in the movies or to others. All organizations need a strategy to stay safe. So click the link in the description below to subscribe to TuxCare's extended lifecycle support service and make sure that you can migrate off CentOS 8 at your own pace. So let's begin with the one that most people won't be familiar with, which is FreeOffice. This one isn't open source, so if you would prefer sticking to FOSS on your computer, then it's not going to rock your boat. If you don't care though, you could do a lot worse. FreeOffice is made by SoftMaker and was previously called SoftMaker Office. It's available as a deb or an RPM or a basic archive. No flatpak, snap or app image though. FreeOffice only fills the three main roles of an office suite. Word processing, creating spreadsheets and presentations. You won't find a separate program to handle databases or flowcharts like what LibreOffice can offer, although you can do these things from inside the three main applications. FreeOffice aims to be as compatible with Microsoft Office as can be in terms of file formats and in terms of user interface. It gives you a choice between the classic menu bar and toolbar combo and the ribbon interface that Microsoft Office uses. Are there still people that prefer the menu bar and toolbar combo to the ribbon? Probably and they will probably tell me very politely why in the comments. In terms of Office compatibility, I tried a few complex templates and there seem to be a few issues on Word documents with header images not being in the right place and elements being moved where they don't belong. It's not atrocious, but it's not perfect compared to the real word. In terms of features, you will find basically everything you need, including PDF exports, dark mode, password protected documents, word compatible auto shapes, open office document compatibility, pivot tables or open GL transitions for presentations. There are a few limitations on Linux though like the integration of video files inside of presentations, which you can't do on Linux, or the OLE integration, which lets you embed a document inside of another, which is only available on Windows. FreeOffice is free of charge to download, but the free version does lack a few features, most notably EPUB export, bibliography support, and a basic editor to create macros. For these and many other features, you will need a subscription, ranging from 30 to 50 euros per year. FreeOffice is a very good option, but users who want a completely free office suite won't find happiness here. Seriously, their name, FreeOffice, is super confusing, as the full suite isn't free as in free of charge, and it's also not free as in free software. For users who want a suite that's FOSS and completely full-featured for zero dollars, there are other options. Like, for example, the granddaddy of all office suites on Linux, LibreOffice. You probably all know about it, it's the default in a lot of distros, it does virtually everything and it comes from OpenOffice, which seriously never use it anymore, never use or recommend OpenOffice anymore, it's a dead project. LibreOffice is faster, better maintained, looks better, integrates better with your desktop, has less bugs, it's just generally a way better product. LibreOffice has a lot of components, a word processor, a spreadsheet module, a presentation app, but also a flowchart and diagram editor that also doubles as a PDF editor and a database module comparable to Microsoft Access. It's completely open source, it doesn't cost a dime and it's installable in virtually everywhere you would ever want. Deb, RPM, Flatpak, Snap, AppImage, you name it. 
You can even install each component individually, so if you don't need the whole office suite, you can just get the parts you need. Which lets you save those super important 50 megabytes. So when you look at your disk capacity, you notice that you don't use more than half, because if you did, that would be bloat. LibreOffice is compatible with the open document format, that's the default, but also with Microsoft Office formats, like the open XML formats or the older proprietary ones. The compatibility with open XML formats like DOCX, XLSX, or PPTX isn't 100% perfect though. Using my complex templates, I could see a few places where things were misaligned. I think for most people and most documents, LibreOffice should be compatible enough that there won't be many errors. If you try to do computer-assisted publication through Word though, I'd recommend not moving your files between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice because it's definitely going to break a few things. But also, you really shouldn't do computer-assisted publication through Word. It's not its purpose and it's terrible at it. In terms of features, LibreOffice isn't missing much. Collaborative document editing isn't available on the desktop apps. It doesn't support hand-drawn comments or drawing for users with a stylus and touchscreen. And it doesn't support as many columns as Excel. It's actually fairly limited in terms of the number of columns it can support compared to Excel. It goes only up to 1024, when Excel can go up to 16,000. Its spreadsheet module also can't connect to external data sources without plugins, which can be critical for business intelligence or BI. Personally, I can say I almost never felt limited by what LibreOffice could do. I wrote my university papers on it, I made my budget documents and my various spreadsheets for work, I made my various presentations for work on it, and it generally never let me down. In terms of interface, LibreOffice is super customizable. Not only can it pick up your GTK or Qt theme, but you can also change its icons in the settings and change how the interface looks and feels. By default, it uses the older menu bar and toolbar layout, but you can change that into a ribbon interface, a simplified ribbon, a grouped bar, a sidebar. Basically, you can do whatever you want and customize each toolbar to add or remove whatever you want. There's a reason why LibreOffice is the default office suite for most Linux distros. It's just full-featured, easy to use and easy to tweak, and its compatibility, while not 100%, is good enough. There is another complete open source Office suite for Linux, and it's only Office. And full disclaimer here, only Office is a sponsor for certain videos on the channel, but not this one, because I'm not doing fully sponsored videos ever again. Only Office doesn't integrate as well as LibreOffice with your Linux desktop. The desktop editor, which is the component you download and install, doesn't really look like your other apps, and opens documents in tabs in the same window. Recently, they added the option to open each app and document in its own window, if you prefer. Still, if you don't mind your Office suite looking a bit alien on your desktop, OnlyOffice is a very good choice. It only offers the three basic modules, word processing, spreadsheets, and presentations. It's free to download and open source, and it comes as a deb, as an RPM, a flat pack, an app image, or a snap package, so anyone can get it. I would be surprised if multiple people hadn't made multiple versions of OnlyOffice for the AUR. Oh, what do you know, there's even only one version that's obviously not a server. Nice. OnlyOffice supports the Microsoft OpenXML document format, as well as the open document format that LibreOffice defaults to, and the older proprietary Office formats as well. Compatibility seems better than FreeOffice and LibreOffice, at least with my test templates. It actually seems pretty much identical to how Microsoft Office renders the same document. In terms of features, OnlyOffice offers real-time collaboration. As long as the document you're editing is hosted on a cloud service, you connect it to the editors, like Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Cfile, KDrive, or LifeRay. It also supports a few advanced features like document comparisons, add-on support for each program, a fillable PDF form creator, or JavaScript macros. It also does all the basic things you would expect from an Office suite. Here again, for my use case, OnlyOffice served me very, very well. It's my default Office suite these days, if only because I have my own document server running on Linode, which also is integrated with my Nextcloud server. In terms of interface, OnlyOffice isn't as customizable as LibreOffice. You only get a ribbon interface and you can't change what's displayed in each toolbar. The ribbon will use a dedicated color for each program if you use the light theme, so they are still easy to differentiate. 
OnlyOffice also supports interface scaling, with factors ranging from 100% to 200% with 25% increments. It can detect that scaling factor, but I did have issues on multi-monitor setups when moving the window from one monitor to the other where the scaling wasn't the right one. Still, if LibreOffice is giving you some trouble with document compatibility, OnlyOffice will probably solve your issues, all the while being free of charge and open source. And now we come to another non-open source Office suite, WPS Office. It's probably the closest thing to Microsoft Office you can install on your Linux desktop. It uses a ribbon layout that's really close to what Microsoft Office uses, although it does offer tabs to edit multiple documents in the same window. It doesn't integrate very well with most Linux desktops, as it doesn't pick up your dark theme automatically, for example. Actually, if it has a dark mode, I couldn't find it. The window controls are on the right and look like Windows window controls. And the scroll bars and the pop-up menus don't follow your system style at all. It's not worse than only Office or Free Office, though. If that's not something that bothers you, then WPS is still a very complete proposition. You get a word processor, a spreadsheet module, and a presentation module, and you also get a PDF viewer. It offers DEB and RPM packages, and it's also available on FlatHub and as a snap. WPS is made by a Chinese company, and some people will probably be deterred from using it by that fact. In some places, there are also some translations missing, like in the so-called Skin Center, for example. For the most part, the programs themselves are fully translated, although some error messages do display that hesitant and very recognizable Chinese way of translating English. If you've ever looked at the DeepN installer slides, you know what I'm talking about. In terms of compatibility, WPS opens older Office Docs, newer Office Docs, as well as their own format. Compatibility seems good, at least with open XML formats, although it's a little bit less perfect than only Office. It should be good enough for most people. WPS Office supports all modern features that you would expect from an Office suite, including document versioning, comments and reviewing, and it supports real-time collaboration as well. It also supposedly allows you to convert PDF to Word documents, which is an interesting feature, but I couldn't find it in the Office suite itself. WPS isn't bad, but its closed source nature and the fact that its compatibility isn't as good, in my experience, as some other options, don't make it a fantastic proposition. There are also some more lightweight options if you don't care about Microsoft Office compatibility. The former GNOME Office suite, while dated, is still perfectly usable. AbbeyWord and Gnumeric will let you create simple text documents and spreadsheets, all while looking like your GTK desktop. Well, if your GTK desktop was Gnome 2, but that's better than not looking like a native Linux program at all. Or you can use the super complete Caligra suite, which really looks good on KDE and does a ton of things. Word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, visual database handling, vector drawing, and project management. It uses dockable panels that you can rearrange however you want, and while its compatibility with Microsoft Office file formats isn't good, if you're the only one opening your documents, or you export everything to PDF, then it's a great option. And that should cover it. Personally, I use only Office because I have my own document server integrated with my own Nextcloud server, and so I can edit my documents from any computer as soon as I log in into my Nextcloud server. I also sometimes drop into LibreOffice when I want something that really looks like my desktop, or when I need to edit a PDF because LibreOffice Draw is awesome at that. FreeOffice is also a very good alternative, although only if you don't care about your programs being open source. And I guess WPS can also do the trick, even though in my opinion it's not as accomplished as some of the other options. With all of these choices, there is no way that someone that needs to work with an Office suite can't do their job on Linux. Maybe if you're a super, super heavy user of Microsoft Office or Excel, it won't do the trick, but for 99% of people, we only use 10% of what these Office suites can do, and these alternatives can definitely do the trick. Do you know who made this video possible? It's Slimbook, and they're letting you get 150 euros off your own Linux Ultrabook, the Slimbook Executive. It's got a 3K screen, a wonderful keyboard, a sturdy magnesium chassis, and a very, very nice trackpad, and some good I.O. as well. If you want one, just use this offer code at checkout. I also left a link in the description below with the offer code. And just take advantage of that discount while the stocks last, because they won't be there for long. So thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to leave me a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. If you really want to help support the channel, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. 
both get access to my weekly Patreon cast and to the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!